Let's consider some other functions that work with infinite domains and targets. So here we have the absolute, so this is going from integers to integers, so it's the infinite, that's an infinite value. And here we have the absolute value plus two. And so let's think through if this is going to be on to and one to one. So on to, are we going to map to every value in in the um, in the range, right? Every value in the target. So if we take the absolute value of zero and plus two, we get two. Um, if we take the absolute value of three and do two, we get five. Can we get a zero out of here or can we get a negative number out of here? Let's try that. So if I take negative three and I take the absolute value of it, I get a positive three and add that to two, that's bigger. If I take zero and add it to two, I get zero. So there isn't any way to actually get a negative number out of here, right? Because no matter what value is here, um, it's never going to be negative because we always take the absolute value of it. So we will never get negative. So here it doesn't map. It's not onto. It doesn't map to every value in the target. So it's not onto. So that one won't work. Here's a, a value that has x squared. And th notice that the range and the target are both, I mean the domain and the target are both the real numbers, the set of all real numbers. And that means it can have decimal values. So uh, let's look at the idea of it being one to one. And that is, does every value in the domain map to a distinct value in the, in the target? So right, that you never have two in the domain that map to the same one in the target. And since this is x squared, let's again look at the negative thing. So let's do three squared. So three squared, what is that going to map to? That is going to map to nine, right? Well, what about if we do negative three? What is that going to map to, right? If we square negative three, what do we get? We get nine as well. So here we don't have one to one, right? We don't, because when we use three, it maps to nine. When we use negative three, it maps to nine. So in both cases, we have two different values in the domain that map to the same value in the target. So it's not one-to-one, -one, so it doesn't have the property. We can't get the inverse of it. What about um, 3x for all integers? So if we do all integers, what happens with 3x? So let's write a few of these to help us understand this one. So we know we can do negative numbers, and let's go ahead and write up our domain. And let's just start with negative one, zero, positive one, positive two. And let's see if that's enough to give us what information that we need. So when we take, <clears throat> what's gonna be in our range? Well, we know um, it's going to be infinite because this is going to have positive and negative numbers but let's just see what they are. So let's just take these ones and see how they map. So negative one becomes, maps to negative three. Zero maps to zero. One maps to three. Two maps to six, right? Three times two is six. So here we see it mapping, but we're starting to see gaps in here, right? This is supposed to, this, the target is all the integers, but notice that we have significant gaps in here. Like, is there any way that we can get to two, negative two and negative one, or even positive one and two, or positive four and five? And it turns out we can't. So this is going to be infinite in both directions, but it doesn't, it doesn't map onto, right? Everyone's going to be unique. So it's gonna, so the domain is going to map to distinct values in the, target, so it's going to be one-to-one, -one, but it's not going to be onto because it's not going to produce all the values in the target, right? The range is going to be smaller than the target. The range is only going to be multiples of three, 
and the target is all integers. So you can see how when you're working with a function that's on a uh, on infinite, have an infinite domain and an infinite target, lots of them can't be, you can't have the inverse for lots of them because there's many that don't have both properties, the onto property and the one-to-one -one property. So you have to think through um, how that function works on, the, on that domain to find out if it has both the onto property and the one-to-one -one property. And you can only get the inverse of a function if it has both of those properties. And that's what we're going to cover for functions.